The Pixel 8 and the Pixel 8 Pro come with plenty of useful features packed inside the UI, but a lot of them aren't so obvious, and I bet there's a lot that you don't actually know about. So today, I'm going to show you the best ones to get the most out of your phone, so make sure you hit subscribe and we'll get right into it. So first up, we've got something that all Pixel 8 Pro users need to do straight away, and I can see why Google do this, but I still don't agree with it. Now, of course, you've got your new phone with your bright and high-res display, but out of the box, it's actually not running at its full resolution, so it's not really the spec that you paid for or wanted. Now, if you head into settings and then go down to display, scroll down and you'll see that your screen resolution is set to high resolution, so you may not have given this any more thought, but if we press on it, we can change it to full resolution, which is 1344 by 2992, and this is gonna give you a sharper, more detailed image. Now just select it and press back and that's it, you're done. And I would recommend this for all users, but the only downside is that you will use a little bit more battery. So if you find that your phone battery isn't lasting you the day, then you may benefit from running at the lower resolution. But for most users, full resolution is gonna be the best option. Now next up, you can actually make your phone operate a lot faster or at least seem to be operating a lot faster. And it's something that I do with all of my Android phones. If you take a look at the new windows opening and changing here, it's smooth and it's okay, but personally, I like it to be that little bit faster as it just makes things a lot more comfortable to use. Now, to enable this, all we have to do is go into settings. You'll then need to choose developer options in system, but if you've never done this before, then you won't have developer options. So to enable it, you need to scroll down into about phone, scroll down to the very bottom where it says build number, and you just need to keep tapping this until it says you're now a developer. And I believe it's about eight times you have to press it. Now, once you've done that, you can tap back and head into system and you'll now see an option near the bottom for developer options. Now, if we press that and scroll down, you can see we've got Windows Animation Scale, Transition Animation Scale, and then Animation Duration Scale. And these are set to one times by default. And all you've got to do is change this to 0.5 times and this will double the speed of all the animations. Now you can also turn the animations completely off so every window just appears instantly, but I actually find this makes it feel a little bit clunky without having any animation at all. So 0.5 times is my recommendation. Now next up, we've got a way to protect your battery. And while it's not needed, it's something that I recommend is it will help your battery and increase its lifespan. If you go into settings and then go into battery, we've got something called adaptive charging. And what this does is it stops your charger just keeping the phone at 100% battery while it's on charge, because this will of course reduce its life over time. Now, if you leave it disabled, your phone is just gonna keep the charge at 100% when charging at all times, and this will reduce life over time. But adaptive charging is actually gonna adjust it to your usage. So while you're doing things like sleeping and you've got the phone on charge, it won't charge all the way to 100%, but it will make sure it charges all the way up before you wake up. Also in battery settings, we can turn on the battery percentage, and I think this is a feature that should be enabled by default. Now next up, we've got a camera feature that not a lot of people seem to be aware of. When you're taking photos out and about, your phone is gonna default to 12 megapixel images, but if you want higher resolution images, you can select the quick setting button in the bottom left, then select the pro settings, and you can increase this to 50 megapixel. Now this works on all three cameras, although it's worth pointing out that the ultra wide and the telephoto are only 48 megapixel sensors. But for those times that we've got great conditions for shooting, then it could be worthwhile to take 50 megapixel photos instead of 12. Now another feature in the pro settings is also the ability to manually select a lens, if we change this from auto to manual and then head back to the camera, you can now see instead of zoom ranges at the bottom, I've got the option to switch between wide, ultra wide and telephoto lenses. And this gives you a lot more control over your shot. And then for those of you that want the full control, we've also got the settings button in the bottom right. And this will enable you to manually select things like the ISO, the shutter speed, the white balance and more. Next up, we've got a cool feature for your wallpapers that also isn't so obvious, but we can use AI to generate a new wallpaper for us, and it's great if you're not sure what wallpaper you want. Now, if you long press the home screen and then select wallpaper and styles, we can then select more wallpapers, and in here, we've got a feature for AI wallpapers at the top. Now, it's a bit limited at the moment with these selections, but you can also customize them to some extent. 
Now the downside at the moment is you can only pick from selections instead of actually typing in anything specific, but I find it's good if you've got a color scheme in mind and you don't know what wallpaper to pick. For example, if I've got a blue theme in my mind, then I can choose terrain. I'm gonna choose valley and then select it in shades of blue. And now I've got some new wallpapers I can scroll through and find one that I wanna use to match my blue theme. Another great wallpaper that we've got hidden away is the cinematic wallpapers. And what this does is it creates a bit of depth to the wallpaper and it makes it more dynamic. To do this, we again press the home screen and then select wallpapers and styles. You then choose more wallpapers and select choose my photos. You can then select the photo you want to use. And this works best when you've got a subject in the foreground with a bit of a background to it. And all you've got to do is press the AI button and it's going to create a cinematic wallpaper where we get a sort of parallax effect with the foreground and the background. Now next up, we've got customization of the display itself. Well, most people, I guess, are going to be happy with the way everything looks by default. Personally, I just want to fit as much on the screen as possible. Now, if we go into settings and then into display, we've got an option here called display size and text. And in here, we can make the font size smaller as well as the display size. And I just much prefer this as I can see a lot more on the screen at once. Alternatively, if you're having difficulty reading things on the display, then you can increase the size and you can also change it to bold text or even select high contrast text and this will really help you to read. Next up, we've got the ability to change the size of the keyboard that I find very useful. And with the keyboard open, if you press the four squares in the top left of the keyboard, we get some more options. And if we select resize, it allows you to drag and resize the keyboard, as well as being able to move it up or down if you want it to be slightly higher to reach. Finally, in this menu, we've got another option called Text Selector. And this is for when you want to select an exact bit of text and you're having trouble doing it with your finger. Now again, if we press the four squares in the top left of the keyboard, we can choose Text Editing. And this gives us up, down, left and right arrows that we can use to navigate through the text. We can use it to select specific lines or words, and then we can even cut, copy or paste. Now this can be useful if you're having issues selecting things with your fingers, and especially when using with large documents of text. Now that's it for today's top 10 features to get the most out of your pixel. Let me know in the comments if I covered everything you didn't already know about. And don't forget to subscribe for the latest tips, tricks and tips when it comes to your smartphone.